All right, good evening and welcome to the January 2024 Town of Poughkeepsie Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. If you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of All right, I'll take a roll call. Christine? Thank you. Here. Art? Here. Phyllis? Here. Uh, Larry is, is, is absent. Tony G? Here. Tony S? Here. Okay. Um, we have a quorum. Uh, we can begin. Any of those unfamiliar with the process before the Zoning Board of Appeals, there's a, an agenda up here on the, on the corner. And likewise, on the Town of Poughkeepsie website, has the agenda and all the meeting um, information. And each applicant will be taken in the order that's on the agenda. The applicant will come in, be sworn, um, describe their application. The board may have some questions. The audience can comment on any on, on the application. If um, the record's complete, we'll close it and move on to the next one. At the end, after all the um, items have been dealt with, we'll have a deliberation. At that point, no further testimony or evidence is presented. We will deliberate and uh, come up with a decision. You can either wait till the end of the meeting or call the zoning administrator in the morning. Yeah, okay. So that brings us to item number one, 54 Woodlawn Avenue. Is there someone here for that application? Is that, are you? Good evening. This is a, I'm a resident. I hope you can hear me well. Hold on one second. Okay, hang on. We're gonna let the applicant go first. It, I'm not the applicant. Okay. okay, so we'll let the applicant go first. Is that? Hi, good evening. Can you, can you please let me know if you can hear me well? Yes. Yep. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for your time. What's your um, name, sir? Just, just a up. second. Why don't you identify yourself, and then you'll be sworn. Sure. This is Ernest and Sandra, uh, and Sandra Lorenas, owners okay. of 54 Woodland Avenue. Do you, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. All right, why don't you describe your application? Yeah, the application is to expand the driveway of 54 Woodlawn, about 10 feet um, um, uh, towards the center of the house. And um, we have submitted a plan to do this. Um, and uh, but I wanted to mention that um, there is an alternative uh, to create a wider parking space, which does not necessarily need to expand the driveway on the side of the house, but rather on the back of the house. So uh, I, I I wanted to I wanted to mention this and um, and um, answer any questions you may have. <laughs> Hello. Why don't you describe a little bit more of your your alternative? Yes. Um, the, the house is um, the house has a, a wide. Uh, additional um, demand of a property uh, on, the, on, on its side, not necessarily near the but with an opportunity. You know, Mr. Lorenz, I have to tell you that you're breaking up. So, are you on a phone or a computer? All right, sir, I, we can't hear you now. Mr. Lorenz? I can see that he's dropped off. Okay. We'll give him a minute to see if he can reconnect.
All right, Mr. Lorenis? Yeah, hi, hello? Yes, now we can hear you. Great. Uh, we, we, we must have gotten disconnected. My apologies if it was uh, uh, our, our problem. Um, I don't know uh, where, where I was uh, left. Um, should I explain the, the idea again? I, I'd like you to describe um, the alternative. Where, sure. where it would be and how you would get to it. Sure. The, the current driveway is in front of uh, the garage of the house. It is about, um, please don't, don't quote me, but it, it's about 16 feet wide and it accommodates three vehicles. So my pro original proposal was to expand that very driveway uh, to accommodate uh, up to four vehicles. But in further review to the property, the, the back side of the property has enough space to open up a wider parking area without having to expand the driveway area. And, we, and that will accommodate enough vehicles so that no one has to park on, on the grass. And the facade of the, of, the, of the house, which does not have a walkway to, 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 to its side, won't have to be altered beyond um, uh, uh, a walkway for people to to approach the house, but um, but we will we will be able to expand the parking space uh, to accommodate all necessary vehicles to the side of the house instead of expanding the driveway. I hope uh, that was a more clear. But... Yes, but how will you get to that to that area? Will there be a driveway to that area? Could you please repeat that, sir? Will there be a driveway to that area that you're talking about? Yes, there, there will be access to that area through the current driveway. Well, the current driveway just butts into the house, right? Just but, butts into the structure. The parking area to the side of the house, creating a path uh, between the driveway and that additional parking area. This, this will be adjacent to the garage. All right. Um, all right, that's all I have at this time. Christine? No questions at the moment. I'm looking at this diagram and trying to figure out exactly where that would be. Art? I'm at a total loss. Shouldn't he have to resubmit and show us the new plans? Um, I don't know that he has to resubmit, but I, I'm, I'm going to ask plans. that he submit, that, that we adjourn it and he submit his alternate plans. Mm -hmm. I don't think he needs to re, re um, advertise it if it's not, if this is just an alternate, it doesn't actually require a variance. Correct. Phyllis? No questions. Tony? No questions, I agree. Tony? Well, no questions pending more information. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to suggest we're going to take some more comments from anybody from the audience, but I'm going to suggest that that you provide a document illustrating exactly um, what you propose as an alternate to see if that yeah. can resolve the problems. Could okay. I, so. Yeah, sure. What, 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 what I believe is that this... Uh, you're frozen now. I'm sorry? Okay, go ahead. of the driveway which will in turn you know the street so it will and it will eventually be covered okay so I, I can see you're having some connectivity issues and so we're not getting all of your comments but Phyllis you had a question uh, well, I guess I'm curious as to why he needs so much driveway. It's a rental house. Well, my, my, my son goes to college at Maris. And as you know, um, and there's always someone visiting and staying over. So that's, that's, uh, that's the uh, that's the case. 
Okay. Thank All you. Right. Okay, I'm gonna um, invite anyone from the audience who wishes to comment on this application. Okay, come on up. Uh, have, a, have a seat, and then you can just, if you could just uh, say your name okay. and phone, and then you can be sworn in. All right. What do I do now? Anthony Contarino. Yes, I do. I see that you submitted a letter. Yes. Okay. Do you have official comments? No, I, uh, I was supposed to be mailed uh, something where I could send in a Zoom, uh, you know, attend by Zoom. I didn't receive it in the mail, so that forced me to just show up. Uh, yeah, the, this property is uh, starting, I guess, July. There's perpetual trash and broken furniture out there. I've complained repeatedly to the you know, zoning board over here downstairs. And it's like, I started, it was there for a couple of months. I started complaining around Labor Day and there's still garbage out there. A couple of busted up chairs, there's piles of boxes, constant complaint. There's something wrong with the system or that, you know, you can't do anything. This is like forever there. So, uh, I, mean, I, let me I ask you this. I would put it on hold until it, we really see what it is. Okay. But I would make a contingent about, you know, if they're not uh, maintaining the property, I would question everything then at that point. And that's a simple thing. The carting companies are not going to get out of there because, I mean, they've had the dumpsters out there and like five, six bags going out in, three, four feet into the road at times. So, uh, okay, you know, this family is not board. maintaining this property here, and it shouldn't be given a, a variance if he can't do what he's already supposed to be doing. That's my point. Okay. I, I have to tell you, that's a different issue than what's before us. Okay. Okay. But I just want to make sure that the town is aware of it because I've complained r repeatedly, and they just get, well, they need another two more weeks, whatever. There's something wrong with it. If you have piles of trash there for months on end and nothing could be done about it, Maybe it's the system that needs to be fixed at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Anyone else in the audience who wishes to comment on this application? And, sir, did you want to respond to that at all for the applicant? The communication was cut, so I did not get the gentleman's uh, name. Could you please repeat the name for me? It's Anthony Cantanero. Cantarino, I'm sorry, Cantarino. Uh, Cantarino. Uh, if you must to Mr. Cantarino, um, it, it, I, I do have to apologize for, for the inconvenience of uh, having some, some trash uh, on the side. There were there were some upgrades made to the, to the house. We are new owners of, of, of the property. There were some upgrades made to the house, and um, and um, we don't live in the property. However, our son lives in the property, and uh, we are um, we have taken all the necessary um, uh, measures to avoid any further trash to be placed on the yard. And um, and um, and again, my apologies. And if um, uh, I'll be happy to discuss this with Mr. Catherino, uh whenever whenever he's available, I will be in town in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so uh, I'm going to suggest then that we adjourn this because I don't see anyone else who wants to comment on this application. I'm going to say suggest we adjourn this to the February. Good. 12th? Yes. 12th meeting. I'm going to ask you to produce um, some drawings or some illustration of what you propose as an alternative to your original application. And that needs to be submitted by Janu January, 19th. January 19th. Are you able to do that? I will do so, certainly. Okay. Can we try to have him get a better connection so we can at least get through? Yeah. You're, we're, we're struggling to to hear you um you keep cutting in and out 
So I, I don't know what connection you're using, but perhaps uh, an alternative would be better. Sure, I will do my best to be there in person. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. In that case, Thanks I move everyone. to I move to adjourn this to the February twelfth second meeting. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Uh, item two on the, is the uh, splash car wash. That's been adjourned, or I move to adjourn that to the February 12th meeting as it's still in front of the planning board, I think. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. That brings us to item number three. Uh, emergency one, urgent care center, 2555 South Road. Is someone here for that application? All right, I don't see anyone, so I'll do a second call on that. This should be adjourned. I'm sorry? Adjourned. It was it. I'm sorry. This matter will be adjourned. Also. It's going to be adjourned. All right. Then I move to adjourn it to the February 12th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item four is uh, Creek Road. Hello. All right, you're still under oath. Okay. All right, so what's new since last time? Okay, um, on one of my last projects, there were so many drunks going around and, and from meeting to meeting, it got a little confusing. So I have provided tonight one that in the top right says original drawing. That was the very first one that was put in, was way oversized. Then we did two more drawings. You'll see revision one, where it was brought down in size both the base was, and then um, the number two is even smaller. So we gave you them to look at. Um, we would like to have either one or two, whichever the board prefers. But based on what the county's comments were, I think we've done a great job <coughs> on reducing the overall square footage with the column and base and the sign. And um, again, they had something to say about being opaque face in lit letters. So if you look at the style of the sign for Eastdale, that's what it is. It's an all metal base, it's all opaque, and the only thing that lights are the push through letters on the front at night, which ours will light white, theirs light green and white. So it is not bright, it is not loud. They're better than having downlit lighting off the top because that's like a gutter effect or some form of a fluorescent that usually uh, needs repair more often um, and also gets broken more often or dirty more often. It doesn't light smoothly. You still will see bulbs on occasion. So we find that the low light LEDs with an opaque face and just a push through letter will just put that glow there and just the lettering lights, the rest of the sign pretty much disappears in the evening. Chrissy, how big is the sign? So what you submitted, Nancy, was the, the, the sign face was 21.5. Yes. Yes. Okay, so these are three alternatives and they're larger. They're 21. Point five. Yes, the original one was the first one we did, and the sign was 39 square feet. If you look at the dimensions, the original sign we turned in, the sign was 39 square feet, the base was 58.5, and the column, the stones I'm talking about, was 24.5. So overall, including everything, that was at 121. I'm only looking for the face. Right, so on revision, Number one, if you look at the second page, the face is two, two foot, two and a half inches tall by nine foot, nine inches wide. That's just the sign. Yes. And that's at the 21 
what was it, 21 point five. something, five square feet. And yes. then revision two is also the same size sign, but we brought down all the stonework even more. So our sign that we're looking for is 21 point, I think it's five, four. 21.5, so these are both 21. Yes, the sign is the same on revision one and two. What is different is the amount of square footage of stone. And if you look at it in comparison. Um, so I mean that would be. Yeah. Whatever one you like better. And like, number two is the one that's only the. the that's stone the smallest. Is four and a half feet tall. Yes. Right, that's Correct. the one that we had in our packet. It's four and a half feet tall. Correct. Revision one is six feet tall. That's Correct. Yes. Okay. Is and the other one was... Is it everyone following that? Yep. Still, yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, Christine? No questions. All right. Well, I like the revisions, especially number two. It was a drastic reduction, so I'm good. Okay, it's still a 17 and a half square foot um, variance, mm -hmm. right? but it's, it's much, much smaller right. than it was. Phyllis? I have no questions. Tony? No questions, but thank you for the visual. Oh, yeah. Uh, no questions, but uh, I do like number uh, revision two. <laughs> All right. We're anyone from the back. audience who wishes to comment on this application? All right. I don't see anyone in, in person. Anyone from Zoom? All right. I don't see anyone, so I'll move to close the public hearing. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And again, you can wait. I probably won't wait, but hopefully I don't have to come back next month. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that brings us to item number five. This is an interpretation uh, regarding the definition of uh, public utility. Is there someone here from that application? Good evening. Attorney Hyde Clark with Young Summer here on behalf of the applicant. Also joining me is Andy Maven, with, uh, who's the engineer, as well as Lucia Yu, who is with Key Capture Energy. Okay. Do you each swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? We do. We do. All right. Why don't you describe this application? Absolutely. Uh, so, again, this is a request for a zoning interpretation. We have a proposed standalone utility scale battery storage project We're requesting that the ZBA consider the public utility definition in the zoning code. Uh, before we get into those specifics, would just like Lucia just to go over key capture energy and um, give a description of where this project is just so you have some context. Hi everyone. My name is Lucia. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, we also have the representative from Vassar College on the phone, Rosaline. She is the landowner of the project parcel. So just to give you some background on our company, Key Capture Energy is a utility scale battery energy storage company headquartered in Albany. We started in 2016 as a startup New York business, partnered with SUNY Albany, and we are now considered an industry leader with the largest operating project in the state and a growing portfolio throughout the country. New York State has a nation-leading goal of deploying 6,000 megawatts of energy storage by 2030, and our company is deeply committed to supporting that. Mm. So just to give a quick overview of what batteries are, battery energy storage systems are called BEST for short. They are very energy-dense technology and require a much smaller footprint than solar or wind. Here we're proposing lithium-ion batteries which are made from battery cells very similar to what you find in smartphones as well as electric vehicles. For the utility scale systems, the cells are arranged into modules, which are placed into racks and then built into custom designed battery containers. They'll be equipped with sensors, monitors, communication systems, control equipment, as well as specialized fire detection and fire suppression equipment. All of our projects contain cooling systems to maintain safe temperatures, as well as a battery management system, which monitors all aspects of the facility down to the cell level and continuously com communicates with a 24-7 remote control center. Yeah, 
Yes, I'll be very brief. I just want to mention this site is well suited for this type of use. It's a 3.14 acre parcel. Actually, could you speak a little closer to the microphone? Sure. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. much better. The, this particular property is well suited for this proposed use. It's a 3.14 acre parcel. It's in a heavy industrially zoned uh, district. Uh, what makes it particularly attractive is that it is adjacent to the uh, Central Hudson substation, which is immediately to the west. Uh, this is a, a facility that the project would connect to and energy would be, uh, there'd be a point of interconnection between those two properties. Um, it's a relatively flat parcel. Access would come directly from Route 55. We have met with the DOT. It will require a highway work permit, but the design that we have shown them, they have said that they would um, be satisfied with. So we feel like this project uh, could be developed uh, pending the resolution of the use interpretation. And of course, it would go before the planning board for site plan approval and, and special use permit. So uh, specific to the town's definition, the town defines a public utility as a, any type of business that delivers a commodity such as electricity to the public and that it be under special government um, regulation. So as Lucia had mentioned, battery energy storage is uh, part of the state's um, energy roadmap as to providing a certain um, level of battery storage on the grid. The local provider uh, also of electricity has a obligation to deploy energy storage. So uh, as Andy mentioned, this is going to be located near existing substation, which um, is your more traditional utility infrastructure. The batteries themselves charge off of that electric grid and then discharge back to the general public um, to provide electricity at peak demand. So um, in terms of what it's providing to the public, it is providing electricity uh, during those times of peak demand. <coughs> in terms of other regulation, it will be um, regulated by FERC as a point of uh, jurisdictional point of interconnection. Um, will also be governed by general uh, PSC regulations as well as um, having to take part in NISO, which is the New York System Independent Operator uh, in charge of regulating the electric grid. So we feel that given um, the other parameters that we must uh, work within that it clearly is regulated by other special specialty um, programs and uh, that we've met that definition and ask you to consider that as uh, part of this application. So if I, if I understand correctly, you, you buy electricity from Central Hudson. Correct. When, when it's cheap or cheaper and then you sell it back to Central Hudson. Correct. So um, Lucia can discuss a little more about that interconnection. Yeah, so the way that these batteries work are we are able to store energy when there is an excess of it on the grid. So, for example, during the day when there is more solar, um, solar energy that's being collected into the solar panels or at night in the middle of the night when the wind is blowing and offshore wind is going crazy, all that energy is being being put into the grid when less people need it. So we can take that energy into our batteries at a very cheap rate because there's no demand and we displace it and put it into the grid later on in the day when people come home from work and turn on the lights when there's more demand and less supply. So that's kind of the market shifting mechanism that we go for. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that because we're able to put energy back into the grid at a cheap rate, it can displace the expensive fossil fuel peaker plants that would otherwise bid into the market at an expensive rate. So batteries not only decrease electricity rates for everyone, but it also helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And um, when you resell or when you sell the electricity back to Central Hudson, is that just between you and Central Hudson or is that has something to do with the actual the end customer? So um, it's an agreement between the transmission owner, which would be Central Hudson in this case, as well as the New York Independent System Operator. So um, those are the two main stakeholders in the agreement, and they take, um, they take responsibility of when to put the energy back into the grid. So the New York Independent System Operator runs the market for the entire New York State grid, 
and Central Hudson is kind of it's um, it, it's not owned by them, but they're they're um, a player in the market, so they take care of when to charge and discharge the batteries, and we don't deal with end use customers which would be you dealing with Central Hudson directly. All right, so I'm never going to get a bill from you. No, never. Okay. All right, and how big do you think um, this facility would be? Do you want to? Well, the lot, like I mentioned, is 3.14 acres, so it's quite small. The portion that would be developed is closer to uh, the Central Hudson substation on the west side. It's probably half the lot. I don't know the exact square footage, but it's... Um, it's a small portion of a vacant lot that otherwise would probably remain vacant. Okay. And I know that you talked a little bit earlier about um, your management systems of the, of the unit, but obviously there are some concerns about safety and fire. Could you address those a little bit? Yes, of course. Um, I know with the recent battery fires in New York State, this is you know, a pretty big topic for everyone. Um, but just so you all are aware, all battery systems have to follow um, a set of codes on the international level, on the national level, as well as on the more local state level. Uh, the two main codes, uh, the code making associations on the National Fire Protection Association and underwriter laboratories. And the way that these codes are designed is um, there are a group of subject matter experts that purposely fail test large scale batteries. They look at the results of these um, in a worst case scenario, how they perform and they quantify these risks. And then they create the codes based on that. So we know exactly what, how the battery will look like in a worst case scenario and the codes are in place to make sure that those are preventative and in the small chance that they do occur that these risks will be contained within the batteries. Okay, and in your application materials, you indicated that other municipalities have accepted this as a public utility. Yes. Would you be able to um, reference some of that so we could take a look and Yep. We actually have a, a slide that we can share now just to show some of the other util, um, other towns that have adopted that. So uh, Village of Blasdale's out near Buffalo that's uh, operating key capture energy system um, at this point. Town of East Hampton, Town of Orangeville, Town of Ulster, and Village of Stillwater. Um, those being municipalities that don't otherwise have a battery storage law so that's not our only sites there are standalone uh, local laws as well um, so where the municipality doesn't have a, a standalone law these municipalities have applied the public utility standard in our experience and are you able have you compared their definition of a public utility with with our definition of a public utility so i can't speak exactly to each one where they differ but in general public utility in my experience, it del delivers electricity um, to the public. Uh, some definitions may say it has to be um, you know, under certain regulation, which this does. Uh, I can't speak to whether or not those are exactly worded the same, but in general, those are the components of a public utility definition. Okay, and I, are you under any time constraints? Let Lucia speak towards development. Um, no specific time constraints. We can operate on your schedule. Uh, okay. All right. Th those are all the questions I have at this time. Phil Phyllis? Christine. Christine. <laughs> One question. Um, the, the towns that, um, the, the municipalities that you currently have, those facilities, are they in, a, in very rural areas? Um, as, as compared yeah, to the town of Poughkeepsie? Yeah, I can speak to some of them. Um, the first one, you can see on the screen the village of Blaisdell that's our most recent operating project that just came online last year Blaisdell is a small village outside of Buffalo um, the other ones Stillwater is a small village outside of Saratoga um, fairly rural communities here but I have the ex exact definitions that they used for the essential services and public utility that I can share after this but in general the facilities are located near existing infrastructure so you have um, similar uses and that we have to be located close to a substation we're located near existing grid infrastructure um Blaisdell did have other commercial businesses right around it's a village so other commercial businesses around residential um kce uh, 
KC3 is located in Ramapo, um, which, you know, densely populated, a little uh, more rural portion of the town. But again, a lot of times these districts are either zoned industrial, commercial, um, close to other substation infrastructure. Thank you. That's all. All right. Yes. <clears throat> Can you go back to the slide where you show the racks that these are stored in? <clears throat> Okay, so that's more of, that looks like a server rack if, for computers, essentially. So what's gonna happen if battery in the middle starts to ignite and catch fire? It's gonna spill over to the other batteries, correct, after the, as they heat up? How do you prevent that? So, um, as I mentioned before, we have the battery management system that monitors everything down to the cell level. It, um, it monitors a lot of different variables, such as temperature, pressure, state of charge, um, a, a lot of other technical variables that, um, someone is physically watching over 24 seven. The battery management system has the, the capability to shut down anything in the system that goes outside of the operating limit. So um, if the BMS does not catch it and is, does not shut down that specific cell automatically, the person who's monitoring will, it will be able to do that. And the batteries are also designed in a way to where um, any failure will stay within that container and will not propagate to other containers. That makes absolutely no sense to me because of all the battery fires we've seen. When you say failure, you're not talking about fire. You're talking about... Any, any failure in general is designed to be contained within the container. But lithium burns so hot, it's going to burn right through, in my experience. Um, what about your fire suppression? How are you going to... What type of fire suppression are you talking about? Um, we are proposing liquid-cooled fire suppression systems. Um, we run a solicitation every year for the technology, so these are pretty far out in advance, um, around four years until construction. So um, we have liquid-cooled systems right now that are in our operating projects, but and we're proposing to use the same ones in, in four years. The definition of liquid-cooled system, you're, talking, you're not talking halogen. They don't use that anymore, right? Or not halogen, not haline. Uh, I, I don't have the specifics, cool? but I can get an engineer to talk to you about that. I would appreciate that because my concern obviously is fire, like you said, based on New York City's experiences. And we've got a lot of batteries sitting there. How many batteries in total? Do you know? In New York City? No, in that, in that project, how oh, many batteries are you um, talking about? I don't have the exact number, unfortunately, but I, I can get that can get to you that. right after this. And also part of any site plan application, we'd be providing a uh, full emergency response plan as well as um, our typical reports that we provide be you know, commissioning, decommissioning, emergency response. Um, prior to any construction, we'd have to provide number of batteries, technology being used, everything, um, everything like that. And I'll just remind the board that what's before this board is strictly a definitional question. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with the safety that will lie at the feet of the planning board when and if that okay. occasion comes. There's also, sorry, there's also a um, New York State Task Force that's um, should be coming out with a report at um, any any time. I believe there there may be a draft that's being circulated, so that will have to be um, whatever recommendations they have. We'll have to right. construct to that as well once we get to this point. And the task force, just in case the board doesn't know, is looking at the two or three, I think it was two, two, recent fires. And they're analyzing what happened in those and the responses, and they're advocating um, what should happen globally to all battery energy storage systems going forward based on the data that they collected These were from those fires. two re relatively recent fires right. last year. Right, right. right. so right. That, that's what the task force has been tasked with looking gotcha. at. Okay. Phyllis? Is there any regulation in terms of the pricing that, I mean, like you're s taking electricity in low usage times and you're storing it and then you're giving it back to them and they're, they being Central Hudson at this point, Central Hudson is going to give it back to the consumers. Mm -hmm. Is there any regulation of that, I don't know what other to call it, than resold? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand your question. Um, so everything is regulated by the New York Independent System Operator. Um, as I mentioned before, it's um, an energy market where we bid in our energy price. 
and we would only win if our our price meets the bid threshold. So these are regulated in a way based on the market, um, based on how electricity is being priced by every single transmission owner and developer in the state. So it's not um, not just based on how we want to bid in. That's enough for now. Okay, Tony. Of the municip municipalities that were listed, are any of the same size or scope? They show me similar to 20 megawatts, yeah. right? In terms of density they're all similar. or population or it's size, like it, you said, uh, I think on there it's... Yeah, it's a 20 megawatt facility being proposed here, and um, I believe they're all at least that size, right? They all are around the same size. I can't say for certain the other developers, but the first one is our project and it is the same size, 20 megawatts. Okay. And then I think we get in later on, but you had a, a view from the road, like what would you see if you were driving on 55? Is it kind of set back? Is it right on the road? So the, the facility themselves are composed of these enclosures that kind of look like storage containers. They're about 10 feet tall. They're uh, approximately 10 feet wide, about 30 feet long. So there would be, these would be arranged in a pattern and we could pull up the site plan if you want to see the, the, uh, <clears throat> the aerial view of it, the, the plan view of it. But um, <clears throat> you, would, you would see these uh, looking down from, you know, from the ele a higher elevation on Route 55. There's no, I don't believe there's a sidewalk immediately in that portion of Route 55 on that side of the street. So there wouldn't be pedestrian traffic walking by there. Um, so really the only views would be for, would be from passing motorists, which would be a pretty limited view. And it's not abutting right up against Route 55 because there's a little bit of a slope. So the driveway is designed so that it, the grade is not too steep to get down to the flatter area where the development would be. Okay, no further questions. Oh yes. Okay, just a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned something about this being monitored. What, what portion of it gets monitored by you, by you guys directly? Or how, how does that happen? So every portion of the facility will be monitored down to the cell level. Um, so the cells are arranged into modules and then racks and containers, and all four of those are going to be monitored separately as well. Why? Uh, currently we're using a third-party monitoring system, but it's embedded within our own um, IT network, so we do have access to everything 24-7 as well. Okay, and then who, since you're tied in with C uh, Central Hudson, who provides the... Uh, <laughs> whatever, the step-down transformers and the rectifiers to, to get the DC to charge the batteries, and who does the reverse, the inverter and the step-up to put it back on the power line? So we provide all the transformers and the inverters. Um, the only thing that they are building is the actual um, breakout structure on the substation for us to connect into, but otherwise um, everything will be divided by a fence and everything that's over the fence is ours. Okay, so, so all of our equipment it's is. It's all yours though? Yes, it's all ours. Now one other thing, um, what advantage is it for your company to be to be called a public utility? Why, why would you seek this? So at, <clears throat> at this moment we're asking that because battery storage is not otherwise defined in the zoning code. So by looking at the zoning code and what's currently permitted, uh, we feel that this definition is something that we fall under and this would allow us to move forward there's no other special designation other than being an allowed use in the town of poughkeepsie uh, in this zoning district subject to site plan review and um, we would otherwise be subject to all the other regulations at the state and federal level okay just if i could do an aside chrissy isn't there something in the town code now about battery storage has any, anything been added to the there code? hasn't been anything Okay. There's energy storage for um, for solar and wind. For solar. solar and wind. Okay, but but this is different. This is utility utility right. uh, scale. Yeah. So basically, the town we're in an area that's not really defined right now, pretty much. Right. The town yeah. presently, Tony, does not have any regulations specific to battery energy storage. Mm -hmm. So this would not be allowed 
at this time unless either the town created such regulations or B, determined that this was a public utility facility. Okay. Um, so I guess the next question I've got, I'll throw it out there to anybody, but uh, if, if, the end pro if the beginning of your system comes from the utility and the end product goes to the utility, uh, what happens about to the definition about uh, providing electricity to the to, to the user? I mean, isn't that inherent in the definition of public utility? Should uh, if I can answer that, the code talks about generation, collection, and distribution. So we're collecting that energy from the grid and then distributing it back to the electric grid. Okay. And so I think it fits. And what, and what code is that? The, uh, that's the Town of Poughkeepsie uh, definition of public utility. Okay, collection and, and distribution. Generation, collection, distribution. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. I might also just add one thing. <clears throat> if energy is not saved in battery energy storage systems like this from the grid, that energy is lost. Mm -hmm. So it, right. it really is, it's recycling energy, saving energy. Okay. All right, anyone from the audience who wishes to comment on this application? You can come on up, you, you can grab that uh, portable microphone. Before I make a comment, can I go up to the monitor and take a look at the post uh, site? Sure. Can you turn on that microphone at the end of the table? Because it takes a minute to warm up. Yes, it is. It just, we're, we're not actually evaluating the site, though. We are looking at you know, it's a question right now about whether the use is allowed. I just want to clarify. So, yeah. Um, I okay, understand. Why don't you say your name? Oh, sorry, Paul. Uh, Steve Englehart. I live at 224 Manchester Road. Okay, do you, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. I can't tell from your picture here exactly where it is and where my house is located, but according to what I understand, it's going to be directly, I live right here. And that looks like the substation, correct? Right? And this is Vassar uh, College property. That is going to depreciate the value of my house by having this building of, I, I, and don't get me wrong, I believe in what you're doing, and, and I think the location is terrible. And I would ask all of you to drive over there and take a look. Another thing, environmental protection. I, don't, I haven't heard that addressed tonight. There's swamps, there's all kinds of animals in here. I think an environmental uh, protection should uh, be taken uh, into consideration. All right, so just to clarify what we're doing tonight, tonight is just a, an interpretation of what the definition of public utility is about whether or not they would require a variance to, to go ahead with this project. I, I totally understand, but I just was given the, a letter from your board that this was going on I wanted to make mm -hmm. my appearance oh, that's, that's all yep so at a later stage assuming there is a later stage those comments are probably more appropriate the, Thank you. the actual siting of the project if it gets to that point would be before the planning board which is a different board and that's where they will get into things like safety and access and visual impacts and things like that this board is strictly right now talking about the definition of public utility that's great but i just wanted these three people to have, have an understanding and when they talk about a sidewalk not being on that side of the road a lot of people walk up and down that side yeah there's certainly a path along there, there but then there is no sidewalk that's correct okay anyone else who wishes to comment on this application could you unshare your screen to see if there's anyone on Zoom? Uh, anyone who wishes to comment on this? All right, then I'm going to um, suggest that we adjourn this till next month. I'd like an opportunity to review um, the other municipalities that also had this issue and compare that with our uh, definition. I, I, and I'm going to ask our attorney to do a little research in that regard.
Nobody has any objection to that? No. Nope. Then I move to adjourn this to the February 12th. Is that enough time, Lisa? Mm -hmm. February 12th meeting? Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. And thank you very much for your thank presentation. You. Thank you. And we you have a copy of those locations. I wrote them down. Okay. If you can email me, that would be great. Okay, that brings us to item number six. Uh, 2605 South Road. Is there someone here for that application? Yes, I'm here on Zoom. Okay, why don't you state your name? Jeremy Robinson, the owner of uh, Moonberg. I apologize, <coughs> I was really hoping to be there in person, but I just had to get my car towed and I'm stuck at home. Okay, <laughs> do, you, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. All right, why don't you describe this application? Yes, well, I, I, I want to thank the board for considering, uh, and it is, um, it's really exciting for me to be here. I, uh, I live in Kingston, but um, I went to college in Gibson, from both 3 to 07, so not only is this um, exciting for us as a business, but it is, it is very much uh, personally surreal for me to be returning in a very different capacity to KFC, so we're incredibly thrilled about the project. Um, uh, just a quick quick background on Moonburger. Uh, we launched in Kingston, which is a homegrown business here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, we opened our second location uh, in New Falls in uh, April. Uh, KFC will be our third. Uh, this will be uh, a location co-located inside the Chestnut Market on South Road. Uh, on the southbound side uh, at the mobile station. So um, like the kind of typical experience of going to a gas station and seeing a Dunkin' Donuts, um, you will see a Moomer. And we're gonna build a really, really cool world inside the station. So you'll step in, I think, I, I hope, and you can judge it when I, when I hope you all come and visit us. Um, you'll uh, experience something unlike any other gas station in America. It's gonna look really cool. It's gonna be an awesome experience. Um, those are drive through on the back, which is existing. Um, as well. Um, we uh, are hoping to do on the facade, you can see in the, um, in the rough rendering, a, a sign that just wraps the corner of the building. There's currently one side on, the, on the, the front facade, which is the eastbound side, which is the Chestnut Market sign. Um, the challenge for us, of course, here is that uh, the gas station is set back pretty far from the road. Um, and unlike a lot of other businesses, certainly in the fast food space, like McDonald's going up um, a little bit farther south, which kind of have the entire building as their brand and with their colors and their design and all that, um, we only have one shot because this entire building is branded around Chestnut Market, certainly with colors and, and, and visual. And so it'll really just be that one sign in the corner we wanted to see how we, we could um, sticking within the character of the neighborhood, maximize visibility from the street. Um, and then the other piece is just looking for a simple addition to the existing monument sign out by the road that holds the mobile sign as well as the gas price to the Chestnut Market sign. Um, to be clear, we are not looking to uh, expand the overall size of that monument. It is simply moving the Ford gas station, sorry, the Ford gas price panels down toward the ground and sliding the Bloomberg sign there. Um, overall, that's pretty small, but any help that we can get, um, you know, particularly when we're competing visually with um, Street Number and Buff City Soap and the phone wash, car wash, which have um, much bigger, much bigger signage than what we're proposing here You're on the south floor of the so uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Tell me, who owns the sign? Uh, CPD Chestnut Market, uh, our, our label. So, sorry, do you mean the monument sign? That's what I mean, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so, so that is there. So be All right. The relationship you have with them, are, um, do you have any control over the sign other than the addition of the panel that you want? Uh, I don't believe so, only insofar as we you know, have that 
an affidavit to be a representative of, of the heirs insofar as we're um, submitting this application. So, um, uh, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, but, but I'm not totally sure if there's anything that I'm um, not thinking of other than, you know, it's just doing this slight alteration. So I, I have a concern that I'd like to see that, that monument sign come into compliance with our code, which I think would require a, a base. Is that correct? Um, so you'd want a separate monument sign? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. It would require a right a, a um, stone yeah. base oh, and some plantings okay. around the base. Yeah. So an all new monument. Well, well. Or retrofitted around what's there. I don't know. Right. I mean, you could probably do something with with that. Yeah, I'd like to see that sign come into compliance. Um, and how, how does your sign compare in size with the individual gas price signs? So it's a little bit taller, obviously, the, the same width. It is, right. it is smaller um, overall in height than the Chestnut Market sign at the top. Um, I, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the exact dimension, but um, of, of those of other the gas price signs, but if ours is 24, uh, you know, I have to believe those are, you know, 18 or something around there. So, uh, have you spoken with the sign company? Yes. And they're able to accommodate this, move all the signs around? So, they, they actually created this rendering when Adam did a, a survey over there, our friends over at Time the Signs up here in, in, uh, in Kingston. And, and so, they, they went out to the field to verify if they could do this and just shift everything down. Okay. Without changing anything else about this overall monument. And you saw the county's denial? You saw the county uh, response? You, you have not seen the county response? Um, I saw just the guidance uh, or recommendations um, from Mr. Wilson. All right, so the county uh, responded to the application indicating a denial. Okay. Um, on the uh, denial of the monument sign and conditional wall sign request I'm limiting the one sign on the facade facing the public road but tell me this you, um, where will you put your menu board it's on it's actually on the, on the uh, rear of the building um, so you can't even see it from the oh. road. it's not facing the road it's behind um, a, a bunch of bushes <laughs> and, uh, on the other so, okay, those are the questions I have right now. Christine? No, no questions at the moment. Art? I have my, I have my typical question. Um, if, you, if you got the pedestal sign, you live without the Moonberger sign on the building and vice versa to limit the signage um, to, just to make the county happy that's just a clarifying question is the county uh denial is that a is that is that funding or is that a recommendation for the county? so for us to overcome to to go against the county's recommendation we would need a super majority yes. of the board um yep. to vote on that and i'll tonight we don't have a full full board um, okay. so we would can, need can I, can I uh, make a case uh, about why uh, for the two sides of course go ahead um, so you know I, I I have to share my ignorance and not necessarily knowing the, the, the kind of ins and outs of, of the code um, and fully respect that code exists for a reason um, I think from a, you know, if I'm putting aside the exact way that code dictates size, um, scale in relation to the facade or to a business, I would just say at a, at a basic um, kind of business or human level, I think that um, I would advocate for supporting what we're doing just as uh, on, on two levels. I would say one is as a a homegrown, local, very small business in comparison to 95% of the other businesses over there on South Road that we're competing with, whether it's McDonald's or a sweet number um, or, or uh, 
or Jersey Mike's, Wendy's across the street, TJ Maxx, whomever, all businesses that um, I fully respect and, and patronize. Um, but if you look just totally, uh, you know, objectively, if you drive down South Road there, um, sleep number alone, which is, you know, 50 feet north or, you know, 100 feet north um, in the new development right there, or um, the Buff City Soap, those signs are so much bigger than what we're proposing here for the facade or for the road. Um, and they, they, all of those businesses have uh, signs on two facades there. There are two Buff City Soap signs, each of which is um, twice as big as both of the, each of the signs that we're looking for for the Moon River facade and our facade. Same thing too with the sleep number. Um, so one one side of sleep number is equivalent to the two, our two facades put together. Um, and they go over two facades. So twice as much signage on those buildings. And then certainly the, the uh, car wash there, um, you know, is, is uh, feels almost like being next to Times Square on a little side street um, where we're gonna exist over here. And, you know, I've went into this project fully aware of, um, you know, what the potential constraints are and don't take anything for granted. Um, but I would just say any help that you can give us, uh, we would so appreciate because I think that we'll be se severely disadvantaged if we only have one side or we're able to compete um, next to those other businesses. Um, I, I will promise the board that you know any of the finished product that you see here will totally fit in the character of that stretch of road, which is heavily, heavily commercialized with signage. Um, and ours will be done. Truly, either of these and both of them put together will be far smaller than any of our neighboring businesses, all of which are bigger national chains. Can I ask another question or a question now? Yes, you may. Okay. <clears throat> um, apparently, having having a, the sign go around the corner, wrap around the building, is equivalent to two signs within the town code. So, how would you feel about just having a smaller sign on the front of the building? Sure, yeah, you know, we, we looked at all options, and actually I'll, I'll just say for context that we had a much bigger sign proposed here um, on the facade just to, again, try to just, you know, we don't have any other way for people to know that we're there, and 99% of people don't know Moonberger already, and so just kind of looking for any um, any ability to uh, make, make, make folks that are either driving down South Road or, or pulling up to get gas aware, we had, um, uh, a much bigger sign that went down both both, both of the both um, sides of the building there um, and extending farther toward the, the ground and um, we had heard from uh, folks at the town uh, who advised that that probably would not be approved and it would need to get the architectural review just because it was a uh, bigger alteration of the side of the building um, we dialed it back significantly with this version um, in the hopes that um, we can get open in a couple of months uh, to, to not um, extend the process potentially. Um, I would just say that if we only had one side of the facade there, I think, um, you know, if you, if you just drive down there, it, e even this existing sign, you know, I can just tell you from the road, is so, this building is so far set back that it's not going to be very noticeable, even as it is. I think one one side there um, would, uh, would, 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 be, would be really hard to see. Our brand at all, and I would look over to the sleep number next door, um, and you know, I mean, they have the, they have two. Buff City Soap has two, so we're asking for <coughs> um, three on a, on a much larger building than any of those. You know, Buff City Soap covers the entire facade, um, and their sign is significantly taller than ours and significantly wider on both on both facades. Thank you. Can I ask another? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> while, while we're back to that Moonberger sign on the building. And I appreciate you know you being a local business and stuff like that. It, it, it is important. What we've done in the past, and, and it sounds kind of crazy, but would it be possible for you to take something, even if it's just a piece of like black, black plastic or blue plastic, and put it up there um, so we could see what it looked like if we drove by? It doesn't have to say anything, just to indicate how big that really is on that building. What do you think? I, I, absolutely, I'll be, I'll be happy to do whatever the, the, the board. Uh, you know, we've, we've done it in the past, and a visual aid is a big. Yeah. You know, the visual aid is is kind of important to me, especially. Um, but if you could do sure. that, it sure. might it might give us a better insight as to 
do you have plans, uh, an opening date or? Hoping for April 1, um, that is, uh, you know, I'll just tell you, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going over there to do a lot of the measurements on the building and things we have at GDC. Um, the reason I'm here and not the architect is because we are uh, doing this as scrappy as possible. It is, um, it is, it is funded by us. And so, um, but so that, that date is contingent on all these puzzle pieces falling into place. I would say the, 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 the hope would be in a perfect world is to be able to get a sign up on the building by mid March or so, just in preparation for an April 1 date, assuming that that does not get delayed and get that sign in production, um, you know, early uh, February. Um, but it sounds like that may not be possible with the, with the timeline. Okay. Tony? Uh, no, I just stopped for discussion. No, thank you. Tony S. All right, just looking at your submission here for this corner sign that you seek. Um, it sa says 84 by 30. Is that the overall length that you're looking at? Uh, on the, the, in other words, is that 84 would be the total length on two faces? Or, or what, are we, what are we talking about there? Is 84 per face? So whatever per that face, is, so okay. That is not, well, it's seven, it's it's seven feet. feet. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So seven seven feet on the side. On yes. each side. So you're really looking at. On uh, each side. You're, right. You're, you're looking at uh, seven feet on each on each side by two and a half feet high. If you got that quarter corner Perfect. sign. Okay. All right. Thank you. Correct. Yes. Yes. And that and that's where I was referencing. Um, you know, I had a bus city. So for sleep number right next to us. Sleep number is. I you know I, I have not measured it, but they have two signs on each. One of each facade, those are you know easily, I don't know, somewhere between 13 and 15 feet each. So um, that was a point of comparison for us. If we were hoping to get something that was substantial here that you could see, but be significantly below our neighbor, just the north. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone from the audience who wishes to comment on this application? Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You have more questions. Did I miss you? Oh, just sorry. Over. Could I ask, I want to ask the attorney, this sign says Moonburger drive-through. Is that, because when, you, when you're driving down Route 9, other than Moonburger, how would you know that it was a drive-through? So isn't that kind, is that, does, would that not meet the criteria for a directional sign? Chrissy's better at this, but directional signs are small in size and they can't they have can't the- They can't be higher than six feet can't be higher than six feet and also can't have the, um, um, they can't be like, you know, you don't generally put the name of the business as the larger part of the directional sign. It's usually something like enter. Because how would you know that you had to drive around the building? <clears throat> directional I mean, sign have to pull in, 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 in the parking area. In the parking yeah, well, area I, I was going to suggest that an alternative might be to just have a directional sign there, but I think there's a couple other things I'd like to take care of first. Though. Mm -hmm. May I add a, uh, a point on the, on the, on the drive-through piece? Okay. Is, um, the, you know, we, we, we do think it's really important for our, our business to make it viable that folks that are driving south on South Road, uh, do, do know that it's a drive-through because uh, yes, unless you know, unless you've been here before, or if, pulled, if, if you pulled in this parking lot or no Moon Burger, I think there's no way you know it's a drive-through. That is a um, a big selling point, certainly for us, um, for any of our guests. You know, our Kingston location is fully drive-through. New Paltz is everything but the drive-through. Very very tiny location where uh, Mexican Blue next to PG used to be. Um, so just a few hundred square feet there. Um, so, you know, we do think that without the, with, without folks knowing that um, this is a drive-through, I think that that would inhibit a, a, a fair amount of traffic because um, it is a big selling point. Okay, um, I don't see anyone in the in the public, and I, I, if there's anyone on Zoom who wishes to comment on this application, All right, I, I'm going to make a couple suggestions. Uh, one is I, I'd like you to talk to the landlord to see what control you have over the monument. Um, I, I think the monument sign is important to you, but I'd also like to see the sign come into compliance and um, by by having a base to it. I understand that that's not 
you may not have any control over that, but that may be something you can work out with the landlord. Um, and then I'd like to be able to see visually the impact of what the sign would look like on the building. So I'm going to suggest that we adjourn this till next month. Are you able to accommodate those things by next month? Yeah, can, um, can I ask what, uh, what, I guess, what would be the best way to show the visual impact? Because I'm happy to do it. You're going to put, you're gonna put up something in that location that replicates the sign, and so we can actually see it. Okay. And so that could just be like a piece of paper or something? Yeah. Any other um, suggestions? That, okay, go ahead. Photos of that and then they can return for next month's meeting. Correct. And then perhaps we'll have... Ask, um, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, it, are there any other, other considerations that we should be aware of? And I guess it's there. Um, uh, is there... Yeah, I guess anything else that the board would love to just see um, in preparation for next month's meeting so, such that we can be as prepared as possible with it? I think you would be entitled to a directional sign uh, assisting people to where the drive through is. I think it's pretty clear where it is, but I, I think that a directional sign would be helpful to you. Um, and it may reduce, if you can reduce the impact <coughs> of the signs on the corner. And likewise, you may want to um, see, I think you're entitled to use the windows, a portion of the windows as signage. So if that's available to you, you might want to take a look at that. Sure. That's great. Um, and then if you had any other questions, I think you could reach out to the zoning uh, who might be able to answer those questions for you. Mr. Chairman, sorry. Um, I don't know if paper's a good idea in this weather if they could put up something plastic and if you could let the zoning administrator know so we could drive by. Yeah, something durable. So. We can drive by you know, earlier yeah. so in case the wind or something catches it and tears it down. Yeah, just let her know, let them know. So they'll let us know when it's available for us. Okay, fantastic. Is that something that we could schedule in for a day? You know, the gas station probably won't love me uh, having something up for a long period of time, but over the yeah. course of a day or something. Yeah, a couple of days is probably fine for everybody. And Paul, you want a spec sheet of a compliance sign if they agree to it? S say that again? You you want a, a spec sheet for a compliant monument sign? No, I just want them to put the base on it to comply with that portion of the code. You're oh. talking about the sign on the building, or are you talking about the sign? You're talking about the, the monument sign. The monument sign, or it's not a monument, it's a freestanding sign. The free, yeah. Uh, so you want to put stone on the base? Yes. I think their code requires that, right? E yes, but it, and you also want it reduced to 50 square feet? No. No, I just care about the base. The base, okay. And then somewhere there was a question about whether the pylon, the freestanding sign, if you wrote it horizontally, whether you could have a smaller sign, or if you're going to keep that sign, whether there might be room to put drive through or something on that sign so that you might not need the excess sign because you have the bottom right corner of that sort of free. So if you put the yellow drive through there, um, Basically, the, uh, as you may or may not know, the zoning board is tasked with, if they are going to grant a variance, granting the minimum variance that's necessary to sure. get you what you need. So that's where all these questions are coming from. Um, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, I, I, would, I, I, I love the idea that we should have a you know, bigger monument overall. I mean, this, you know, this is um, you know, a fraction of the size overall as any of the plaza monument signs if you know if we had that kind of size i think we could do a lot more here i actually think as it is almost nobody's going to notice this movement or sign it anyway on this monument so um but of course you know if we can have it there we would certainly love to because it helps um i think this the text for drive through on this sign would you know, even if we were to um put moving burger on an even plane would still be relatively small i mean even where you see chestnut market the market piece um, you know, you can read that fine standing 10 feet away, but I think if you're driving a car quickly down the road, um, you know, unless you already know this as Chestnut Market, I think it's pretty tough to, to see. That would be my worry. I, I would also say, and I don't know if this is a reasonable way to frame this, but um, I would say the ability for us to um, 
to have the the Bloomberger word mark there um, at an angle and gain a little tiny bit of size there and also visual interest to maybe get stand out a little bit more. Um, I, I would advocate, um, you know, in terms of benefit to our business would outweigh, you know, reducing the height of that sign by two inches or three inches or something. All right, and keep in mind, because the county has recommended a denial of the, the monument, the additional monument sign, if you don't think that that's that important to you, you know, let us know that. I, uh, yeah, and I, I, I don't mean to miss, miss speak. Um, I, uh, I think it's very important to me. I think um, it, but, but it, uh, I, I guess I was trying to make the, um, uh, the case that I think as is for both these signs, we have a, a big uphill battle. Um, even if you grant us, um, you know, the, the variances as, as is, um, which we would so love, uh, I still think it's going to be incumbent on us to um, do a lot of press and social media and get folks in here. And um, but to the extent that the, these the variance in both these respects can help us gain just a little bit more, um, you know, we would love that. If it was, you know, certainly if it was, you know, I think the, the importance of the sign sign is much much. Um, much greater to us. Um, I think the, the sign on the road, um, I just mean to say that I think it's, um, it, is, it is pretty small, and so I don't think it um, will reach everyone, but I think if we could you know, get 5% more eyeballs on that truck in five day, that's already good for us. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll move to adjourn this to the February 12th meeting. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And that motion carries. Okay. That brings us to the end. Oh no, there was somebody. Uh, emergency one, this? they didn't, they didn't, uh, did, or did we? Two lead agencies and one to deliver it on. Oh, right. Right? We did. Yeah, monument sign for Creek Road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that brings us to item four, Creek Road. Um, this is an unlisted action. They reduced um, their application considerably. Anybody have any real concerns with this? I, think that I again, if we're, I like the number two, not, not number yes. two. I like yeah. the red edition number two. Yep. It's, you know, it's, it's way down, down to about 50 feet versus 120 some odd square feet. So we're, if we were to grant that variance of 17 and a half square feet of, of the of the re, uh, revision number two, mm -hmm. um, can we uh, make the motion to include it as? Um, to include all the other parts of revision two? Yes. Okay. Then uh, I move that the ZBA determine that there are no other involved agencies and declare itself to be lead agency for this action. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the ZBA determine the action would not have a significant adverse effect on the environment and issue a negative declara declaration. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say vote by aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I'm going to change the date on this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, um, Christine, if you wouldn't mind making a motion. Okay. Let's see, what number is that? Number four. Um, oh, so actually, so you're going to approve a variance for 17 and a half square feet? 17 and a half, okay. And that's revision and number there, two. And there is a staff report, I think. Yes. There is, there is a staff report. Okay. I move that the board approve the request for an area variant set forth in item number four. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings set forth in the staff report for um, a 17 and a half foot 
sign. Square foot. Square foot sign. Seventeen and a half square foot sign. No. It's a seventeen and a half foot square foot variance. The okay. sign is twenty one and a half square feet. Okay. For a seventeen and a half square foot variance. So move. Or a twenty one and a half foot sign, whichever. Okay. <laughs> Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Mr. Chair, do you want to discuss the county's comments about lighting? Uh, Wait, can I just ask one thing before you do that? Um, since both revision one and revision two, I think we're 17 and a half foot variances, right? Because right. um, should we just make it clear in the motion that it's revision two that we want? It's conditioned on the construction. That it's conditioned yeah. on so the construction. So I move to amend that motion to uh, reflect that um, this application is granted subject to um, the revision two um, illustration submitted in, in evidence. So, so the revisions weren't in the packets, but what you uh, approved was submitted with the application. So that's what submitted you Submitted tonight as part of the meeting. The, the original, what two. was approved was it was actually submitted revision. in the packet. Yes, yeah. was submitted in the packet. The was, was revision four and a half. It's the smallest one, yes. the one that was four yes. and a half feet tall. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But we're we're all calling that revision two. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Uh, any any opposed? That motion carries. Regarding the lighting, I think that the applicant <coughs> has um, adequately described. Um, the the county's misunderstanding of the lighting proposal for the lighting application, and I think that it, it adequately describes and addresses the county's uh, concerns about the lighting, and therefore, um, I don't think we have to do anything else, right? Everyone good with that? Good. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> so that brings us to other business. There's a request by the planning board uh, to be lead agency on Sky Point Hills, Manchester Road project, located at 200 and 210 Manchester Road. Um, it's a multifamily development to include townhouses and conventional multifamily dwellings. Uh, it includes a renovation and repurposing of an existing residence for a community building. Um, so I move that um, we accept the planning board's uh, request to be lead agency. Second. Any discussion? Where, oh. where is that? Do we know? Uh, it's right across the street from uh, Battery Energy Storage. Yeah. Right. It's place that we're right across from the okay. gentleman's house. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And then. Um, there's a request from the Town of Gypsy Planning Board, the lead agency on Inwood Avenue Townhomes, located at 8189 Inwood Avenue, a proposed 76 unit clustered subdivision of duplex townhouses and common area, clubhouse, recreation amenities, and open space, subject to proposed rezoning. Um, I, I move that we accept the Planning Board's request to be lead agency. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And that motion carries. And finally, I move to uh, adjourn. Yes. Uh, one, one other quick item. Thank you. Um, it's the beginning of the year, so I just want to remind everyone um, that the training credits for uh, board members when it starts anew uh, in January, four hours of credits for for everybody. Um, we we just want to. Not we, most people have met those requirements year after year. Not everybody has, so I just want to put it out there early on in the year that uh, it's just four hours. We will send around information about when trainings are available. Please take advantage of those. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I move to adjourn. I'll second that. Any discussion? Most. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? The motion carries.